Okay. Um, yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Eric Kjellman. Uh, I come from the uh, Tromsø University Museum. Uh, we, are, we are also one of the five uh, uh, heritage, uh, cultural heritage management museums in Norway. Uh, our uh, uh, area is above the polar circle. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a how to potentially potentially use photogrammetry to uh, detect uh, rock art in in areas where there is a high lichen or moss growth. Uh, when you don't have the time to remove it completely before studying it. The, the presentation is a, a, a result of uh, me stumbling over uh, a new, brand new rock art uh, site in, uh, outside of uh, Kirkenes. Uh, in the north of Norway, um, in the in the summer of uh, over here, over here, uh, in the summer of 2015, during an uh, excavation, uh, the the excavation was uh, to clear the area of uh, of uh, heritage sites, uh, Stone Age site, and a, a modern site. Uh, and the rock art type didn't they didn't even know it existed, uh, and that kind of screwed things up. Um, it the, the the rock art site itself was very hard to see, even though even though the even though I knew where the rock art site was after I found it. Uh, when you were look, if you looked away, it, you you lose the sight of it because it, it was so it's so covered in in uh, li li lichen, and uh, it's also a bit eroded, and the lighting conditions are just perfect at one time of the day, at noon. Um, uh, there is. The site is the only known Stone Age rock art site uh, with carved rock, uh, rock art in a 300 kilometer radius. Uh, you can see the, the blue spot here, that, that's the closest rock art site with, from, from the Stone Age. Um, it was previously thought that it might not actually be any rock art here because of the, the bedrock of the geology of, it, of the area wouldn't support it. But uh, then again, that was wrong. So, um, so since this is a CRM project, we and they had already been allowed to build the. It's a they were building an oil terminal, uh, billion two billion kroner project. Uh, some rock art doesn't stop that, and so. They they are, they had already gotten the permissions, so we couldn't like we couldn't say oh no you, you can't do it. So we had to we had to get a new project uh, going right away, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't uh, slow things down just because of the rock art. So uh, this was in uh, August, I think we discovered it, and uh, by October we had uh, gone back there to 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 do the job. Um, this was, uh, yeah. Th this was to prevent uh, delays. Um, the new project was uh, aimed at uh, determining both the extent of the rock art itself, or the, the site, to, to have a clear definition, uh, but also to figure out if there are any more sites uh, unknown in the general area or well, within the area of the oil terminal that's being built. So, as you can see here, this is further up in the, in the area. Um, 
uh, doing archaeology in Norway is always a challenge, but, and especially out there, it's at 70 degrees north. Um, in October, we have four or five hours of daylight, and the, the sun rose to uh, nine degrees above the mm -hmm. horizon. So, very poor conditions. Uh, it was freezing at times. It was between six and plus six and minus two degrees. It was snowing in the end. Um, but it was at the utmost importance to get the documentation of the site done as quickly as possible because they had to decide by December if the, the heritage uh, officials had to decide if, if that it actually could stop that project. And they had to do it by the in the stooping the, the parliament. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and for this, I was uh, I was suggested uh, by the peer reviewers for this paper to to try and add some something else than uh, other than. Uh, other than just we documented the rock carvings with photogrammetry because that's been done. <coughs> so I, 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 I tried to create a, a, a hypothesis, hypothesis that I, well, I basically had that hypothesis when I went to the field, but I didn't necessarily test for it uh, in a perfect way. But my hypothesis was that using photogrammetry, um, I could, uh, I could use it to reveal hidden rock art, that is, rock art that is beneath or concealed by folios lichen, that is, lichen that is slightly tree formed ish, like a leaf. So, uh, as well as uh, using uh, traditional uh, techniques to to manipulate the photogrammetry model so as to detect and define the specifics of the, the rock carvings at that site. So this is how I, I suppose a traditional side lighting technique would, would be simplified to. So the, the light source, you put it at a lot low angle and you try to create shadows in the grooves of the of the rock carvings so you can see if you see here then there's this shadow part and you would look down and you would see you would see that there's a shade and you could detect that the eye would detect it, or the brain would detect that as a feature in the rock however when you have a uh, moss and, and lichen covered surface you would Create false positives where there are where there are uh, the the light is shading for the the the, the beam uh, the, the light is shading for the light beam. So it would be harder to detect this as a feature when you're basically having to to consider this as well. Um, this was observed in the field, and I suppose most people that have tried this would agree. Um, so the 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 yeah that's just interesting. the theory for photogrammetry is that instead of one point of view and uh, uh, being forced by the light to see only where you want to see, you can actually see underneath or at least to some degree underneath the the lichen. Like it uh, by by the fact that the, the the angle angles from the camera would create a viewpoint that goes underneath the, the like it um, in theory. So let's see if it actually worked. Um, I'll just uh, explain a bit more about the the field work. Uh, as I said, it was it was cold, uh, limited natural lights. Light. Uh, it was actually at one time it was uh, the most perfect light 
probably for viewing those rock carvings because the light was so low in the sky and it hit perfectly at noon. So uh, it was easy to see them, but once the, the, light, the light went so quickly that you couldn't even get your camera. Um, we had uh, rock art experts to survey the general area. They, they did manual uh, surveys, surveys looking at the rocks, seeing, looking for potential for areas that could have uh, rock art. Then they used side lights. Uh, they, we removed lichen we, with brushes. We cleaned, the, uh, we cleaned it and, uh, and uh, they, would, they would pick out areas that they said, okay, this looks like there could be like uh, rock art underneath the, the lichen. Uh, and then I would come in, do my photogrammetry, process it in Photoscan, uh, run it through radiant scaling filters or depth maps filters in MeshLab, and I would get results like these. Uh, in this case, the, this is the original image. You see it's impossible to see anything with flat light. Um, but uh, the rock art experts said, okay, this is a potential area. There could, there's maybe some lines here we don't know. It's hard to see. I would throw it through the software and, and see that, okay, there's nothing hiding beneath the, the lichen, at least not that we are able to penetrate. And we could move on to the next part. So, but did, did the lichen experiment work? This is flat lichen, so it's just completely flat against the, the surface. Um, this is how a cross-section of the, 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 the lichen uh, looks like when you're... This is just a, a tiny, tiny part of the, the rock surface. And I suppose I could say that it does work as I thought it would. But my theory was correct that you can actually see a bit underneath... You can actually see a bit underneath the... the, the underneath the lichen, but unfortunately there were no rock arts, rock carvings hiding underneath them, so so it was kind of a sad, but, but uh, we did, this is also an example of how it, uh, how the, the light was, it, it's great, the light is great, it's perfect light, you can see it, a lot of the figures pretty neatly, but there's this area here, which I know for a fact that there are hidden figures there, and they are even with side lights uh, in the darkness. You, you can't see them that well, and you basically you need to know that they're, they're there before you can see them. But by pushing them through uh, a depth map filter in in MeshLab, they pop out clear as day, and you can actually see features that are really really hard to see. These are I think 0 0.1 millimeters deep. So they're the entire, I don't know, I don't remember the settings for this, but it's it's really shallow, and you can actually see that it's uh, the the erosion of the surf, rock surface has has uh, been to to such an extent that the the legs of the, these figures are gone, uh, and they actually they actually follow a, the, the the edge of the the edge of the vegetation. Uh, so what I did then was to, to establish, the, to reach the goal of the, the survey, we had to dis establish where the rock carvings ended, where they, where they were. Uh, most of these figures we knew, like visually had seen in the field, but some of them like this one, tiny figure up there, it was completely impossible to see in, in daylight. Uh, with the side light, it was possible to see that there was probably something there. And in the 3D model, it's really clear that it is there. Uh, so it was possible to detect figures that wasn't you weren't able to detect just using your eyes. Uh, as well as uh, the figures that are definitely figures, you have I have some blue figures here that, uh, that I that I think might be figures, but it's the, the resolution of the model isn't high enough, and it, it's, 
It's not because the resolution of the model isn't high enough, not, it is because the software I'm using, I'm using ZBrush, wouldn't support more than 30 million polygons. But the entire, in, in order to get the entire model into, into one setting, because I had to do this really quick, I couldn't do more than a decimated model. So ideally I would do a much higher resolution model than this, but then again. Um, so yeah, the results from the, the survey, no new rock art sites were found. It was just that one panel we saw. Um, by using photogrammetry, we could reject the surfaces that even the rock art experts thought would be, would be best for for this uh, for rock art, but uh, but we could uh, definitely say that uh, there, there were none, uh, at least until we 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 remove the lichen and moss permanently. Um, we also reveal fine detail details about the possible uh, and possible rock carvings, uh, but that was not in the field. We couldn't do processing like that in the field because, well. We were out in nowhere with no power and nothing. Um, fortunately, no no hidden rock art under the lichen, but that could be due to we could have probably seen it if we had done the photogrammetry before we started cleaning it. Maybe we could have uh, we could have detected some of the figures and and proven that the method actually worked. Um, but. Without this being a scientific paper or anything like that, it it it, it does look like the hypothesized effect is to some extent true, and uh, I think just uh, some more testing and you would prove it for sure. Um, let's see the conclusion. Um, yeah, uh, it's basically what I was just said. Um, I would uh, highly recommend it as a, a tool. It's not often you discover new rock art sites. This was the first time in well, 20 years, the, that's, and it's never happened in, in an excavation, as far as I know. At least not up in Norway, nor, north of Norway. Um, but it's a very effective method. It, it's, you can get quick, quick, uh, quickly get a lot of high detailed documentation done, short time. Um, yeah, I don't think there's more to say. There's, uh, if you have a phone, you can see the 3D model by following that QR code. And there's the report from the project. And that's about it, I think. In, and, and, and before the time.